Hey guys, Jamie here from the Old Creamery and welcome back to our channel. So in today's video, we're going to be showing you how we take out autumn cuttings. So why would I want to take autumn cuttings of dahlias? A, we're fighting against nature and B, they're going to take a lot of work when usually they're asleep when it's nice and cold. Uh, well, if you've got a bit of a greenhouse and some right environment, you can help winter those um, baby cuttings through so you get ahead of the season for next spring. Also, if, it's, if you have a good run of about eight to nine weeks, we should be able to get a small tuber. And from that small tuber, we can give it a rest of maybe even a two or three weeks, even a month. So it's a really good way for building your stock levels when, like us, we're trying to start our business. And for every cutting which strikes, well, that's a free plan. So come with us today and we're going to show you how we take our cuttings in the autumn. So you're going to have to apologize that this will be out of sync because when I was recording the video, for some reason, the audio didn't record through the Bluetooth headphones and I'm learning this learning all this technology. So basically, before you head out into the garden, what you're going to want is a pair of really good snips. So I have these little scissors types for the gardens, which have been recently sharpened. And then as you will see in the video, I've been disinfecting them. Now, I realized early on that if you disinfect with bleach, you also get bleach spray everywhere and that um, can stain your clothes. So unless you like the tie-dye look, probably not the best thing to do in the garden. So I found my Ajax wipes. So they're not sponsored by me. However, if they would like to sponsor this channel, more than welcome to have a conversation. Um, but yes, they're really good. Um, they're eco-friendly and they're biodegradable in your compost. So I just carry them around me. As you can see, I give my snips a really good wipe. I also need my cutting blades, instruments like that. I also use ISO alcohol, um, but just when you're in the garden going from plant to plant, I find this is a really good way of just sanitizing quickly so you don't transfer any baddies you may have in the garden from plant to plant. Now, I don't sterilize in between every flower like some people may do, um, but I find doing it from plant to plant just rules out um, some possibility I'm going to take anything with me into the garden which I don't want so let's go into the garden so I don't know about you but whenever I go into the garden I always have a friend out to the world completely oblivious to what's going on around her you know and here's the other shadow we call her sky a bit like a panda she's my little panda bear and the other one god knows where she is she'll be hiding somewhere so as you can see here, I've got two varieties, I've got technically three. So on the left is the variety Bushfire. Over in the middle at the top right, there is a water lily, which is called Pan Howden, really good for showing. And just sticking in behind the wheelbarrow, there is Tartan, which is a really good display, tall, large, decorative. Probably could be grown to a giant, but I typically keep it as a large. Now, as you can see, it's the end of the season. They're all starting to droop over. They've been wind affected. They're losing their vigor because they've been pumping out the flowers all season, looking beautiful. Um, so usually what I would do to prepare for storing them in the winter is cut them all down to about two thirds off the top, leave them about another two weeks, maybe three, and then cut, the, cut them down again, leaving about eight to 10 inches. A week later, I'll be ready to dig them up. But because I'm trying to take some autumn cuttings, what I'm going to do here is cut them all down to about halfway um, so that while we still have the warmth in the day, they'll start to shoot up new shoots. And from them new shoots, that is what I'm looking at to take my cuttings. So I'll keep cutting away. There's a whole row to do here and we'll come back when I've done. <laughs> So 
as you can see now that these have been halved, that if you look at the side laterals, there's those new leaves starting to form. Now these are the perfect um, examples of where I can take my cuttings from. Obviously these are a bit immature. Um, I need to wait for them to develop. So maybe a week or two, they'll develop into having a couple of leaf nodes. And that's what I can then look at taking to make my cuttings. So I'll find one which is perfect for taking and I can explain this to you in a bit more detail. Here is a nice young shoot. It's perfect to cut down into some greens, which are the same as cuttings. Um, and I actually broke it while I was taking this video. Here is a close-up of the same one. In this diagram, what you will see is our cutting from before in the video. We've got the stem at the bottom where it was attached to the plant, and we have our three leaf nodes and a growing tip on top. We're gonna effectively cut for our cutting just below those second leaf nodes, but to make it easier and taking it into the shed for propagation, we're gonna cut it above the third node, one centimeter. Um, I find if you do cut lower, you do get a bit of dye back in the stem, which may impact on those two side laterals which are starting to form um, just inside that third leaf node area. So we'll cut it above the one centimeter and as soon as we cut it, we place it into our jar of water. Just for interest, the two photos on the side were two of my favorites this year. Cornflake in the bottom right corner, which I believe is gonna be next year's big plant. We will have some available on the website, so stay tuned. Um, but it's a beautiful flower and in autumn, it actually changes so that orange becomes the most prominent, prominent color across the flower. So you get two for the price of one, how about that? Um, and in the top corner is a little colorette called Arteria Conference and it looks just like a water painting in real life. I absolutely love it. In my propagation room. So before we start, I thought we'd, I always like to get my tools out. Now I've got a couple of different things on the table, so you can choose which would work for you. Because um, there's multiple different ways of making coatings, and really it's about trialing what works, what doesn't, and that's what I've done over the last couple of years. So, first of all is a scalpel. You want to make a really clean cut, um, and I think that that's nearly improved my success rate 20-fold, just by having a sterilized scalpel. eBay, a couple of bucks best investment you'll make. Obviously we need a marker pen and a marker pen because um, you obviously want the tra track of the variety where you're taking a cutting off. If you're going to be taking multiple cuttings, I have a really easy way if you're a bit tech savvy um, on keeping track of them all and I'll show you that a bit later. So, you want our trusty sanitizer wipes or anything else that you want to sanitize your equipment with. We want a routine hormone. So at the moment I'm using Cyclone Rooting Gel. That came free with the propagating equipment I bought. I've also got Rudex, I've got Clonex. They all seem to do the same thing. But we are gonna do a bit of a trial today because there's a lot of natural rooting hormones out there. So in here, it smells divine, but it's cinnamon. So I've got some cinnamon there and we'll try that. And I've got some different uh, mediums. So depending on how you want to root your cutting. So I think I had one right here. Can you read? There we go. So the good old Jiffy. Um, don't pay too much attention to the leaves. This has been a trial batch with different lights. It's looking a bit yellowy, so it's not too happy. But as you can see, hopefully there, there is a bit of a root. So that is all good. It's on the way. Make sure I put it back where it belongs. Otherwise we'll get confused. But if you haven't got a whole mini greenhouse like this, so which you can pick up from the Green Church, so Bunnings, um, $30 and it comes with your first lot of little jiffies. And your jiffies look like something like this. And you soak them in water and they absorb the water and they puff up to this, which is a sustainable peat core, I think it's called. Um, and you can put your cuttings in there. I do find overall they keep the moisture and humidity really well and I don't have to water them as often as I do in some of different medias. Um, but the success rate has been a bit 50-50. And we just got a dog walking in, so I apologize for any noise in the background. Hello you. I'm busy. No, you're not playing. Sit. Good girl. 
Another option for you is also these um, cardboard pots. I think you can make these as well. Um, these came from a $2 shop. Um, they are a bit bigger, but so you fill your, and you can mm. fill them with your own media. Um, the only downside to these is if you're a bit like me and you're impatient at the start, it's going to take a while for the roots to fill that and then start poking through the side. But the benefit of this type, as well again, this type, is that you can take them straight out, put them in the soil or your pot to grow on, and there's no disturbance to the root ball. If you want to make your own medium and use these cells, like this is just an example, this has been used as you can see, you would want it clean and sterilized, ideally. But you can use that type as well. And you can use the various smaller sizes, bigger. I use, prefer to use quite small ones because I like to see the roots forming and I can get them planted on really quickly. So I guess when we're talking about cuttings, cuttings particularly need three things. They need heat, moisture and light. And probably four because as they start to grow, so they need food. So there's your four kind of principles of anything we need to provide for these little cuttings to give them the best chance of success. Um, they will root with just pure water. And if you're just starting out, that's fine. Just give it a go and take 20 cuttings. At the end of the day, if you only get one which got roots, amazing. You're still a free plant, isn't it? Tutorial is just about the home gardener who wants to multiply a couple of stuffs and play around. I am going to do a more advanced um, video, which will go through some of the extra stuff I put in there and how I control my lights and heat and things like that. But from a basic home gardener, you can start off in something like this, put a little plastic container over a couple of holes in top to keep the humidity up, spray a bottle of water, and in hopefully in two, three weeks, you'll have new little plants. What I do to help them along a bit though, is I use an organic plant tonic. So this is called Omegazyme from Hygiene. In essence, and I hope they don't watch because they'll probably tell me off, but it's pretty much sea salt. Um, a bit of a posh version. So I, when I water or spray them, I use this. Helps also with that initial shock and gives them a bit of base nutrient to kick things along. Um, I also have that mixed up in my little spray bottle so I can keep spraying them as I go and wet the soil as well so they're only getting access to that from the start. I also have a little spray bottle with, this one's got Rose Shield, so pretty much if you're not in Australia it's probably not called that. It's an insecticide, midicide, everything. Um, so I only make that up just mainly because this time of year we're trying to take cuttings in autumn. If this season, and particularly in Australia, it's been horrid for mites. And really, I don't want to introduce mites and all any baddies into my propagation place. So say you want to be a bit creative and make your own medium. And there's lots of different options out there. I suggest trialing error. Um, but what works for me is basic everyday compost. And we're firstly doing this in freezer or fours. So I'm going to use today a third of compost third of sand. So propagation sand can be really expensive so I am a bit of a cheapskate and I buy the playground sand. If you were doing a higher sand perlite mix you probably do want to go that coarser mix because it can like pack down like playground sand but because I've got the compost in there as well I find it does work not too bad. So we'll dump you in there and then perlite, vermiculite, um, as much as it looks like polystyrene, it isn't. It is made from volcanic rock and it's expanded or bloated through heat or something. I'm not a scientist. Anyway, we'll dump that in there. Get rid of that. And we'll just give that a bit of mix. I could mix in there as well, and it also works well, I just don't have it at the moment, is the coconut fibery blocks you get from Bunnings, um, or an EAD, how white, 
hardware store. And I buy mine in one of those big blocks. You add it to water and it expands. And then I let it naturally evaporate. So it's dry again. Just makes it easier for measuring as I go. Right, so there you go. That's nicely mixed up. You can see that in there. Place that on the mat for the purposes of this video because it does get a bit watery. I'll just give it a few foot down. And you want to make sure it's spray quite liberally. The idea is that we don't want to add any more water like this until after we've got roots. We are going to miss them, but we don't want to drench them like that, which will help avoid them dampening off or rotting basically. I'm going to take my trusted little screwdriver, it's a disinfectant wipe so it's sterile, and I'm just going to dab about halfway down. Now I also find that's easier while your cloth is damp, or so your medium is damp, because obviously it's, when it's dry it just kind of fills up the holes back for you. And I'm just going to put that aside for the moment. Here's these babies out of the way. And set up our rooting hole on. So I've just put a little bit in the lid, don't need too much, but it's better than trying to dip it in and introduce anything bad in there. I'll also put the cinnamon, and I've got a bit of water there, because for the cinnamon I just think we might need to dip and then dip to make it work. Um, I haven't tried cinnamon before, but I just thought I'd try it. And then our scalpel. Let's dip that. Be very careful, they are very sharp. All right, and then I am ready to go and get my base material. Okay, here's one I sort of prepared earlier. So this is a variety which we affectionately call Tammy's Purple, because um, it does seem to breed everywhere. So it's not one I'm overly keen on in terms of propagating because I have lots of it. So I thought, but for the purpose of this video, it's really good because if it lives or dies, it doesn't really matter. And that's what I always recommend. Don't go and get your prized possession of the plant until you've got your process worked out. And of course, the one thing I don't have is my bee. There you go. So a little compost bin or something next to you so you can throw your things in and you go. I'm just tidying this up, which you can and can't do, but I'm doing it more so I can show you what's on here and what's usable versus not usable. Now, while we're looking on here as well, I'm hoping I'm going to have to go behind the camera. I've got to learn all this. You will see in there. There's a little side shoot, but it's so small that I'm not even going to bother trying to take a cut in from there. There is a two pairs of leaf nodes, but they're that close to this. 
So I've trimmed that cutting down a bit. I don't know if you can see that or not. So you've got your two top pairs of leaves, there's a second pair of leaves here and a third set here. So what I'm going to do is cut probably about a millimetre just below and you want a clean sharp cut. And you get rid of this bit. And then we're going to remove these two leaves as well. will then leave you with, I don't know what you call it, like a heel. So you'll see the two little side bits where those leaves were attached. And sometimes you'll find there's a new laterals coming out there. I prefer to cut them off. At the end of the day, it's going to grow from the top and you're going to have new laterals come up here. Other people leave them on and then it grows further up. I, if I'm taking a leaf cutting only, and I can see one of those little side laterals in there, I do leave it, because I think that's a, you've got a new growing point to come from. But as I say, we're still doing some trial and error with our leaf cuttings to see what they do in the long term. And like I said before, we're going to take off these next pair of leaves up, just leaving us that tip almost, because then we've got two points of roots to come from. There we have our first cutting. That's probably a good size for me. You could take a bit of these leaves down if you want. I'll probably will on the next cutting because the leaves are quite big. And we're gonna dump, dump, dip as much as we can in our rooting hole. We're gonna place that straight down into our medium and gently firm it together. Just give it a quick spread all over with our rose shield. Again, this is our midi side, fungi side, pillow of anything. Just in case we're bringing anything in from the garden into our growing environment. And then I'll give it one last watering. This has also helped. keeping the humidity levels up while we're out here doing this video. And I'll move on to this second one. This is quite a long cutting. So what have I got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven potentials in there. So we might do a leaf cutting not to show you how we do with them as well. So we'll start off with our usual cutting. I think we'll go two for this one because there's a good size in between again just below, below that leaf node we'll peel back as you can see in there there's two new little leaves coming up as we're taking them back And we're going to chop some of these leaves back, like we said. So just to look in there, and we'll just put. I usually just take the middle bit. That's usually your biggest leaf. And pretty much the more leaf area you've got, the more moisture you can lose. So depending on how humid your environments are, you can leave take take more or less. So there we go. We got that first cut in there, and then we will. I'm going to try this one. So where you would usually cut just below that leaf node, maybe go a centimetre below. Just have a cut through there. And then about a centimetre above. Just trying to break that apart without damaging too much. And then you could even go Like pushing this one, but hey, why not? We're only we're trialing here, so we'll take that bit off. So, we're effectively left with our main cutting, our next stem below, and our next left cutting below. So, we're gonna cut straight through the middle of those two. 
in theory, one, two, three, four, five new plants could grow from that. And they probably will. Um, whether they all form tubers and they're all viable moving forward. But if it's a variety that you're really keen to have, well, you've got five plants. Yes, you've probably, probably got one which is known to be viable moving forward with tubers. With our leaf cuttings, maybe you get tubers. Maybe we won't. Maybe they'll be blind. But what we will get, if we get a plant, is the opportunity to take more cuttings. And if you get your cuttings like that, so there's always a way of working through it, just through your trialing. Anyway, oops. So, what have we got there? We're going to dip this one in our spray first, sorry. And it's a bit bigger, so I'll just do that. Spray it around a bit and shake off the excess. Then I'm going to dip that in a bit of water and then in our cinnamon just to see. I'll put that one in. A little bit of water. With our leaf cutting, again, try and get as much hormone as you can on that little spot. And we'll put that one in there. purpose of the experiment, I want cinnamon on here. So I'll dip that in the cinnamon and the spurtle. And lucky loves, oh you can have cinnamon too. So you'll see on top of here there is the sliders which can help control the humidity. So at the moment, for the first two to three days, I'm going to keep them fully closed. I'm going to be coming in and misting every morning, night, um, maybe three times a day. It's autumn here, so it's only about average temperatures, 20, 22. So it's quite ideal. Um, and we'll just keep an eye on them, but they don't wilt. Like a bit of foam. I've got a fee bay. Um, it works well on my um, actual heat mats because it also keeps the heat coming upwards. Um, but whilst you at home might not have all these heat mats and equipment, I thought if we just put it down here on the floor on one of our mats, it's probably more natural to a home environment. So I thought I'd do an update on the cuttings. Now these are five days old um, and we're going to pull one out and just see if we've got a callus. Um, don't think we'll have any roots. We're probably about another week away from root formation. But you'll see they're a bit yellow. And that's actually my fault. Um, the lights I had have been on timer. And I had them set perfectly for uncovered cuttings as I do in my bigger propagation area. However, because I had the plastic lid over, that was acting a bit like a reflector. And has actually scorched them. Um, so now I've, I'm aware of that. Um, I've learned that. We will turn down the light just a fraction and hopefully they won't, um, we won't lose them. But these two particular still look quite healthy, so I'm reckoning we might do well. The leaf cuttings may be the ones which I'm not too hopeful for due to that light issue. But we'll see if I can get in here with, um, and pull one out. Now I don't like to just pull them out, so I use a little teaspoon. So I'm just gonna use my spoon and just loosen up some of this soil. Just see how these are going. Hold it from the bottom a little out. Oh, wow. We have roots. So that's been in there for five days. And as you can see, we've got two little roots coming out. And what I would have hoped for is that the roots would form more uniformly across the bottom of that callus. However, we do have roots and it will grow. Um, it's just not as, I guess, strong or vigorous as I hoped. And I'm going to put that down to those issues I said I had with the lights. So the secret is now to try and get it back in without damaging those little um, roots. Wiggle you in there. And 
Now the ones at the back were the ones I've just done in the video again for you because as you may have seen while I was doing the first video you couldn't actually see what I was doing. <laughs> so technical error on my part as we learn. So I thought I'd reshoot and I can put them side by side as you've just seen. Oh, I just wonder what's happening with this one. Let's see if we can get in there. Oops. Oh, there we go. So we have another one, as you can see in there. Get this camera to focus potentially. So you can see there we've got a good colour, and we're just starting those little white bits, just starting the root on that one. So we'll just put him back in where he belongs. So I hope that little video on how I set my cuttings inspires you to try taking your own. Once you start, you usually can't stop and it does get a quite a bit addictive. So as you can see in here, hopefully, there's a few trays of all different dahlias at different cuttings, all taken this autumn. They are starting to get a bit yellow in here, uh, but that's just because of the lack of light. And I have recently just installed some overhead supplementary lighting to see if that helps improve them. But this is keeping the ambient temperatures at least three or four degrees at night, warmer than it is outside. And during the day, sitting around that 25, 30 degrees. So thank you for watching. We'll do some updates on how those cuttings are going we just taken. And I'll do a more advanced video on some of the settings and things I use when I'm doing mass production. All right. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching our channel. So if you're going to propagate lots of different varieties and you're going to have a big cell tray like I do. So one of my cell trays holds 72 cuttings. So keeping track of them while you're doing it, because you may not strike them all on the same day. Sorry, I'll cut them all on the same day. Um, I used to just have spreadsheets printed out where I'd write them all individually, then go back and type them on the computer. Um, or I'd be using plastic labels like traditionally you would, and you end up with lots of labels. But all it takes is for you to knock one or two, and you're very confused to where you are. So I'm going to show you a little tip what I use. And I love this because it backs up to my main computer at home. So when I'm... In the house I can check where I'm doing I can set new um, cell trays up which is a bit easier on the bigger screen um, but when I'm out in the propagation shed or I'm out in the field and I want to just update something really quickly um, I share my folder with Google Drive so it's really easy to set up on Google Drive so if you're on your actual main computer you download Drive as you can see the icon there um, log in with your Google account and then you tell it which folders you would like to Share. So I just have one folder on my whole computer and it's called plants. I'll probably have two actually. But for the purpose of propagation, I have one. It's called plants. And as we log into my drive account, smile, you'll see I have all these folders, which is under my plants folder. So I have plants and I have all the different ones. So I was doing individual um, spreadsheets until I got rather confused one day and I was like well I'm trying to go from one to the other and backwards and forwards and that was really annoying and then I remembered about worksheets so now I just have the one called plug trace and if we log into it you'll see the trial we've just been doing in this video so that was just a basic street but then as you look along the bottom I've got my turbo clone machine I've got greenhouse one greenhouse two jiffy green one and jiffy green two and I can just jump from one to the other quite easily and this is how easy it can be so we'll just jump into the trial and pretend that this is cell number one and we've just taken for example form B art and it's the 2nd of May and let's just say I want to touch the screen on that cell I can copy it and I can say well, well I've done one two three four five cuttings of that today Jump into my next cell, let's say I did cornflake, and it's again the 2nd of May. 
copy that. Boom. So really, really simple and easy as you can see. And I can just go in and edit one or two as I go. Um, in my cell trays, what I usually do is write blank if I've taken something out. Or when I was first starting, I used to put it in green to say it rooted, red to say it rotted, and then I got to work out my um, percentage rate of success at the end, or failure, <laughs> as it was originally. Um, so that is a really simple way of keeping track of multiple trays. Quick tip for you though, whilst you're actually using your physical trays, is to place a little metal, metal tag or something which won't rust, rust through a little hole on like a wire, like your plant tags I use, just in the top left corner. So that whenever that tray is out and being moved around on the tabletop, you can always match it up to make sure you're not going to get yourself confused in where you are at with your cuttings. I also do the same on the um, propagation lid. I just have a marker pen and I write what tray number it is, tray one, for example, or greenhouse one. And that is also starred in the top corner. So because it's quite simple when you're moving around and doing things, you will get them mixed up. And then you'll have a big tray of unknowns which is fine if you're just a home gardener, but if you're trying to grow them to sell, but obviously you want to try and minimize it the best you can, but you're not getting things confused and having to grow them out for a whole year, which is a small section of my garden has unknowns in it. And as luckily we've had a really long season. So some of my cutting some early in the year are now starting to flower and I'm managing to identify them. But anyway, I hope that tip was useful. If do you want a more in-depth um, version of how I set up the spreadsheets and actually link that to the computer, please drop it in the comments below and I will do, certainly do that for you. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching our video, guys. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the alert button if you want to stay tuned for what's coming up next. Have a great day.